The Maltese Vegan As you probably know by now, we're in the month of Pink October, the month dedicated to breast cancer. Here in Malta, and probably in most of the world, there have been a number of events and ads to raise funds for breast cancer research and to raise awareness of breast cancer. I know it's late in the month, but I finally decided to make this video, to do my bit. However, my message is not like the ones that's, that have been spread this month. In fact, it's more of a criticism, but also with lots of advice. So, a bit of a disclaimer here. I'm not attacking people with cancer, God no. Nothing further from the truth. In fact, this is to help people suffering from breast or any type of cancer. I'm, attacking, I'm not attacking the intentions of the campaign. In fact, I hope more and more of effort is done each year. I'm not attacking the marketing agency since they did a good job of presenting the information they had at their disposal. In fact, that is precisely where the issue lies. The right information is ignored. Not by them, but by the health industry. The health industry hides what can best solve the issue of cancer. The main strategy, in fact, is on early detection, since it's presented as the best way of being able to cure your cancer because it's caught at an early stage. Ironically, you will see that it's neither early nor is it cured. So while mammograms may be an important weapon in our fight against cancer, the campaign alienates potential, actual and surviving breast cancer patients from the most effective, cheapest and safest and all-in-one cancer preventing and cancer curing strategy. The campaign is at best well-intentioned but misguided. Dr. McDougall says it best. The major studies done on the dietary treatment of people with breast cancer or the prevention of breast cancer have been useless. They have basically taken and taught a diet, a reasonable, modern, prudent diet that is a, still a very sickly version of the American diet to one group and left the other group on the regular old sickly American diet and they got minimal results. They never tested it. They don't have the guts. And so it's advertised that diet does nothing to prevent or to cure breast cancer. So what are the campaigns saying? Most doctors, that's a that's unreasonable. That's uh, too much to ask of a woman, to ask her to change to oatmeal and hash brown potatoes and bean burritos and minestrone soup. But what will women do to keep their breasts and to stay alive? Women will uh, check their breasts every day and worry about the results. Women will go to a doctor at least once a year and have that male doctor check her breasts. Women will have their breasts squeezed between mammogram steel jaws to prevent breast cancer. That's what women will do. And women will go so far as to have cuts in their breasts made called biopsies. They'll have big chunks of their breasts taken out. They'll have the whole breast amputated. They'll have the nose taken out of the, uh, the armpit on that side. They will have radiation to their skin and chest, which will increase the risk of dying of heart disease. They will take anti-estrogen drugs, and they will take chemotherapy that will make their hair thro th fall out and make them throw up for a year. But they won't eat. 
bean soup. That's too much to ask. If I had 30 seconds to give you advice, my advice would be know your body. Know your body from head to toe so that when you see any changes that you don't like, you go and get them checked out. Imma amina aktar testijiet, komplejna bit-testijiet u rizulta li kelli breast cancer. Minna me kamilt il-terapija kolla nġecessarja u l-operazzjonijiet kolla nġecessarja. Wara sit snin erġajt ħassijt lampohra, reġa ħariġri il-breast cancer, fej kelli nerġa namil operazzjonijiet uħrajn u anka aktar terapija. Wara ħami snin erġajt ħassijt lampohra u reġa ħariġri il-breast cancer erġajt kelli namil ġerti operazzjonijiet u dini darba anka amilt il-kimoterapija u għadni għaddija bit-terapija bħalissa biex nikkumbatti il-tilet kanse. Though small consolation, one benefit of the fact that breast cancer is now the number one cancer among women is that breast cancer survival is a very active area of research. For example, this major 2011 study, which followed about 4,000 women with breast cancer for seven years. Not all of them made it. The researchers tried to figure out if there were any dietary factors that may have been associated with their early demise. They found two things, and the first was saturated fat intake. Those women who ate the most saturated fat after diagnosis increased the risk of dying in those seven years by 41%. So where is saturated fat found in our diet so we can avoid it? You know, first thing people tend to think of when they think of saturated fat is beef, right? like a big, fat, juicy steak. But no, beef doesn't even make the top five. This is from the National Cancer Institute. Number one, cheese. Number two, pizza, which is basically another way of saying cheese. Number three, grain-based desserts, which means primarily cakes, cookies, and donuts which is why pink donuts may not be the best way to celebrate Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Then number four, ice cream, and number five, chicken. And you thought pink donuts were bad? I'm not making this up. And of course, you know, grilling and frying meats makes them particularly carcinogenic due to the heterocyclic amine formation. So KFC better donate to breast cancer research. You've heard me talk about this before, right? Chicken is not a low-fat food, even skinless and steamed, and it is in fact one of the top five contributors of saturated fat in the American diet. Then comes pork, burgers, Mexi, which uses a lot of lard, beef, and number 10, reduced fat milk, which you may think, wait, that's, that's only 2% fat, right? Uh, but that's 2% by weight, not by calories, which is what matters in the body. Reduced fat milk is actually 30% fat. <laughs> it's like if you took a stick of butter and dunked it into a cup of water and said, see, now it's only 50% fat. No, it's still 100% fat. I mean, the water doesn't count. Right? But anyways, uh, these are the top 10 foods to stay away from to decrease our saturated fat intake, which may not only help prevent breast cancer in the first place, but to improve survival for those that have it. For years I've been presenting data on how we can best tune our diet to prevent cancer, but if you already have it, uh, there's been a burst of new research lately on cancer survival, which I'd like to share. For example, we used to tell cancer patients to rest, uh, conserve their energy, but now there's evidence that cancer survivors may survive longer if they exercise. But what about diet? Where are the data? Well, we know that eating cruciferous vegetables like broccoli may help prevent bladder cancer, so I guess it should come to no surprise that broccoli may help with survival as well. Uh, this was a study done at Roswell Park, uh, following a few hundred bladder cancer patients for about eight years. Of course, many didn't live that long, but in teasing out which factors seemed to improve survival, they found that raw broccoli consumption appeared the most powerful. Eating just a single serving or more a month of raw broccoli was associated with half the cancer mortality. Fruit and vegetable intake also improved survival from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, especially green leafy vegetables and citrus. Though 
It is sobering to note that only 22% of the patients in the study followed public health recommendations for the minimum intake of fruits and vegetables, suggesting that the lymphoma diagnosis may be an important teachable moment to improve diet and other health behaviors. If a cancer diagnosis can't get someone to eat their greens, I'm afraid nothing will. Migration, colonization, proliferation, self-renewal, immortality can be used against us when stem cells go bad and decide to build tumors instead. Cancer stem cells may explain cancer spread and cancer recurrence. That may be why cancer tends to come back. There may be no cure, only remission. You can have a breast cancer relapse 20 to 25 years after you thought it went away, thanks potentially to cancer stem cells. Our current armamentarium of chemo, drugs, and radiation is based on animal models. If the tumor shrinks, it's a success. But lab rats only live two or three years. All these new fancy therapies like you know, anti-angiogenesis, you know, cutting off the blood supplies to tumors, that's great. But the cancer stem cells may be like, fine, I'll go somewhere else and grow another tumor. What we need is to strike at the root of cancer, treatments aimed not at just reducing tumor bulk, but rather at targeting the quote-unquote beating heart of the tumor, the cancer stem cell. Enter broccoli. Sulforaphane, a dietary component of broccoli and broccoli sprouts, appears to inhibit breast cancer stem cells. Breast tissue naturally has lots of stem cells, right? Your body never knows when you're going to get pregnant and start, you know, have to start making a lot of new milk glands. Researchers recently discovered this compound in broccoli that may destroy cancerous stem cells and keep them from going rogue in the first place. Estrogen receptor positive human breast tumor. Here's an estrogen receptor negative breast tumor. Let's add some broccoli juice. Going, going, nearly gone. Stem cell hotspots before and after the broccoli. Though breast cancer is the most common cancer among women around the world, the rate in some areas of the world, such as Asia, is up to sixfold lower than in North America. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and click the subscribe button below if you want to keep watching my videos.